Let's shed some more light on this topic. And I'm joined live by Cos Samaras, Director of Strategy and Analytics at Redbridge Group Australia. Thank you for joining us, Cos. Good afternoon. So tell me, you know, what are you expecting for the Dunkley by-election in about uh, two weeks' time? Yeah, look, I think there is a, a rusted party vote uh, in place. That is, there are loyal Labor voters, Green voters, and Liberal Party voters, they're going to come out and support their respective party. Uh, that that rusted on vote is not as big as it used to be historically. Uh, so I'm obviously now referencing to the people that will decide the result. And that is, a, I would say, about 40% of the electorate that really doesn't have any party loyalty, um, doesn't pay much attention to political news or the political cycle at all, uh, and will be turning up and casting their vote and potentially determining the result one way or the other. And the theory is that, uh, you know, in a difficult economic environment or challenging environment, should I say, the disgruntled, the unhappy people are more likely to turn to independence. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And we've got we've got a, a bit of history there to, we can look back on and see how that, what that looks like in in uh, 2022 in Victoria in particular. There were pretty significant swings against both major parties both the state and federal election in Victoria, in, in uh, federal and state uh, electorates. So in Dunkley, we're, we're going to be looking at a night uh, in suburbs like Caram Downs and Frankston North. Those two suburbs are experiencing the greatest level of what we, we would define as mortgage stress, financial stress. Uh, in, in Caram Downs, for example, in excess of 80% of uh, borrowers in that suburb are experiencing negative cash flow. That is, their incomes are just not keeping up. So um, we know that they will probably spray all over the place when it comes to uh, their, their, their vote and it will it'll come down to preferences in those suburbs. But let's see what happens in the more stable um, areas of the electorate, like Mount Eliza and so on. And how do you think the candidates for the major parties are performing at this moment, addressing Look, pretty, some of those issues yeah, like mortgage stress? Yeah. It's going to be very, very hard for any of these candidates to cut through uh, as the uh, the local um, AEC uh, representative just stated before, uh, when there isn't much media coverage, uh, generally the public don't tune in, um, and and even more difficult for local candidates is then getting cut through in a such such a small period of time. So the best they can do is just knock on doors and um, and obviously when they are meeting uh, voters to uh, leave a very positive impression. Uh, it's going to be extremely difficult for them to address some of the more global issues that are driving some of these issues we've touched on. And how will this foreshadow the federal election coming up? Yeah, that's right. So Dunkley is an absolute uh, uh, must win for both parties. Uh, the, the Labor Party needs to win it to prove that they could hold a, a majority of seats at the next election. There are 12 electorates under Dunkley in terms of being worse demographically and, and geographically for Labor, which they hold across the country. This is one of the best ones they hold when it comes to outer suburban electorates. For the, for the coalition, they have to win this because this is Dutton's pathway to victory. He's made it very clear that he's going to focus all his energies in the outer suburbs and regions of, of this country. And if you're not winning seats like Dunkley, you, it, it's difficult to see where you're going to find uh, enough seats to, to even, even put Labor under pressure. So it's an absolute must win for both. And do you think acceptance for the stage three tax cuts are now a thing in the past? Or will yeah, it continue right. to yeah. be a hot button issue? Yeah, look, the stage three tax, tax cuts are, were welcomed and we either in our poll, but also other public polls that were published. It's pretty clear the majority of Australians have given it the big tick. However, again, we, we touch on those voters living in Caram Downs in Frankston North uh, their problems are in the hundreds of dollars, not in the tens when it comes to their weekly demands. So although the tax cuts are welcomed, it's not a silver bullet. It's going to take the Labor Party at a federal level um, to uh, at least 12 months to rebuild some of that some of that political skin they've lost over the last 12 months. Um, so I think at least now they've got something to talk to the electorate with. It's a question of is it enough? We'll, we'll find out on the 2nd of March. Thank you so much for that. I'm sure we'll talk soon. No Carl Samaras, Director of Strategy and Analytics at Redbridge Group Australia.